And there is another one, another interesting quotation that says, means will be divided to reach hearts. Some of the methods used in this work will be different from the methods used in the work in the past. Uh, probably she had a vision or something like that, that she saw things, as she saw people with a small device on their hands that it was lighted, and she didn't know how to explain that, so she says, there will be things that will come up, <laughs> and those things will be good as well for, for preaching the gospel, okay? And there is another one that it's really encouraging for me personally. This quotation is really, I mean, I take it as a personal thing. As field after field is entered, new methods and new plans will spring from new circumstances. And now, break, stop. Are the circumstances that we are facing right now the same circumstances that she was facing on those days? So the methods shouldn't be the same. And we as Adventists are still doing the five plan, five day plan for quitting smoking as we did in the 60s. And we are doing a lot of things as we did in the 50s and maybe in the 80s. So what are we doing? Okay, let's keep reading. New thoughts will come with the new workers who, will, who give themselves to the work. And this is wonderful. As they seek the Lord for help, he will communicate with them. They will receive plans devised by the Lord himself. I mean, it's not a madness. It's not something crazy that we come up with things. The Lord is actually behind the new plans. The Lord is actually behind the new technologies, the new means. I know that some old people say, when the television came up, this is from the devil. And the devil say, oh, really, it's mine, so let's use it. <laughs> and uh, actually, everything can be good in God's hands. So why don't we think about this very deep? It's not the moment right now, but I just leave you this idea to think about, okay? Now, Let's talk about evangelism 3.0. What is that? Okay, it's something that I, I, this is a term that I used to use. I don't think I have read, I have seen this in any other place. And uh, it's, talk, let's talk that it's actually based on social network. What is a social network? You know what's that, don't you? Should I explain the difference between social media and social network? I don't think so. We are all professionals, don't we? Okay, so a social network actually is a network of group of people with something in common. It could be the family, the workplace, a friendship, a hobby. It could be Blossom. It could be anything. <laughs> yes, why not? Blossom has a Facebook uh, profile, doesn't she? Okay, good. So the people that has, has uh, things... People that have things in common, they share things, they share time, they share thoughts, they share whatever they want to share. And they can use any mean. It could be a physical meeting, it could be a virtual meeting, it could be a social media, it could be anything, an email, a WhatsApp, whatever, okay? Uh, phone call, anything. So it's a hot topic. Evangelism 3.0 is a concept. I'm not going to talk about technology. Do not expect that. We have Jarl Gungadu for that. He's the best. He can tell you about the, whatever is on the merge, on, on the very f newest thing. He, he, he can do it. But I would like to talk about concept. And the, co the concept, I took it from the journalism. The, ju the journalism is a parallel. I, need, I made a parallel from uh, the, the journalism into the evangelism. So let's talk about journalism 1.0. It's, uh, someone remembers, anyone remembers those first web pages for the newspapers that you could find the same content on the website and in the printed edition? Those, we're talking about the end of the 90s, 97, 98, when uh, we had the Netscape connection and that noisy thing, <laughs> click. You remember that, don't you? Okay. And I had a 14.4 kilobytes modem. That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay. So we had the same content on the website and we had the same content on the, on the printed edition. So we came up later with the Pentium MMX and a little bit of more broadband. We, we had uh, 500 kilobyte, uh, kilobytes of uh, broadband. Oh, those that were very lucky, they, they found the, the one megabyte broadband on DSL. Remember that? Okay, so, uh, oh, sorry. Before we get into 2.0, it's 
The concept of this, I'm sorry, I didn't see the, I didn't look at the screen, my, my fault. The concept is the information was in one hub. There was a common place, a pillar, let's call it like that, and the information was flowing out from there to the customers, okay? That's it. You go, you buy the newspaper, and you read it. You cannot react to that. And on the website, it was quite the same. You were reading the news, but you couldn't react on that, okay? So it's one-way communication. It's actually not communication, okay? So let's talk about 2.0. We came up with uh, better computers. We came up with a uh, higher speed on internet connection. So we had to start much more content in the, um, let's say that, digital edition rather than the printed edition, because you cannot just click on the play button on the paper, okay? <laughs> and we started to have uh, the um, computer's corner on the digital edition. We, we had to, uh, many things. So that made the digital version a better version with more content. Uh, but the, the, the theoretical part also improved, making the uh, communication bi-directional. That means that the people could read the newspaper on the web page, which still was the hub. It was a single place where everybody has to go to check the news. And they started to have the choices, the chances to leave a comment at the end of the article, to interact with other uh, customers, you know, but they still had the same common place for meeting, which is the web page of the newspaper. Okay, so you have to go there, they spread the news, and you can start reacting to the news, but always towards the central point in common, which is the hub, which is the website, okay? So we can right now interact. Both be bi bidirectional, is that how you say? Yeah, bidirectional uh, communication, but still the same pattern, okay? And now we come up with journalism 3.0. I remember one of the Simpsons uh, uh, episodes where Lisa Simpson was willing to run a newspaper. I don't know if you saw that one. That's the paradigm of communication, when anyone can have a newspaper. So anyone may, may be a journalist, anyone may express himself or herself uh, with his or her thoughts and have his own analysis of the truth or reality or whatever it is, okay? So now we are kind of within this area, but still developing. Why? Because anyone has a device. So any one of you guys can take a photo of Pedro and say, this is boring, I don't like it, and publish it and tweet it, and it could be over there, okay? <laughs> Even the young, the young, second young people like that, <laughs> Anyone is working on that. So you may have your own voice worldwide. It's a different thing if you have an audience, okay? But at least you have a chance to have your own pulpit worldwide, okay? So you may become your own journalism, your, your own journalist, your own media, sorry, journal. You, we, they cannot just make us shut up anymore. Really? Do you believe that? They cannot make us be quiet anymore. Are you serious? I think it's, it is possible. I'm not going to talk right now about the Arab Spring and Twitter, and we have Brian Collick over here to talk about Twitter, but you know what happened. They couldn't make the people be quiet. So this is something that we need to think about, and uh, this is a tool that we need to study a little bit. Okay? So. The paradigm is this right now. That's what we have. We will still have big news enterprises, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the BBC, whatever. We will still have big hubs of information. But right now, if you want, if you're a fan of cooking cookies or muffins, would you find information about this in the, I don't know, the News Daily or the Daily News? Is that the Sun? I don't know the newspapers here in the UK. Yeah? Daily Mail. Will you find a section of muffins in Daily, in Daily Mail? Difficulty. It, it's not going to be easy. Maybe you want, one day you may, may find an article. But if you go to Google and you Google it, you will find a lot of 
information. Even people that has their own blog, and they, I did a muffin on with raisins, I did a one with strawberries, and they exchanged recipes and a lot of things. Right now, it's not a matter of how much information you cover. It's about, it's about how deep you go within that information, that particular information that you care about. And you will always find a niche, a lot of, a target, a public, okay? So anyone becomes a journalist, anyone becomes a mean, and anyone can have his or her own audience. And it will be a very faithful audience, believe me. Okay? So, the same happens with Evangelism 1.0. What the church as an institution did? What have we done? Okay, we are starting setting up web pages where the people can get in there and read who we are, a little bit of our history, what do we believe, and certain kind of things. And uh, maybe an email address for sending something. I want to study the Bible, really. <laughs> do you have a lot of emails like this? I want to study the Bible directly on your website. Do you really? Okay, that's the point. <laughs> that's the point. So this was evangelism 1.0. It was like the journalism. In other words, there was a hub, a web page, and the customers, if they wanted to, they just go over there, they visit our website, they get information, that's it. Okay? Now we have, we have gone farther than that. We, now we have gone, right now we are living the almost the golden era of the evangelism 2.0, which is actually uh, a parallel on the other one. Okay, you have it there. It's an official website or ministry's website, plus multimedia services and videos and whatever it is, an interaction. And the people can interact, okay? They, they can leave their comments, they can whatever, ask questions. It's, it's, it's good, it's an improvement. But it is still a, uh, it is a bi-directional communication, but it's still a centralized information hub, okay? So that means, and you know communicators what I'm talking about, whatever it comes from an official source is an, is an information that you have to mistrust. Don't you? You rather believe what any, anyone else says about that certain particular product that you are going to buy, you're thinking to buy in a forum where they say, hey, this is a wonderful thing. Oh, it's horrible. I just unpacked that thing and it was broken already and the customer service was awful, so you don't want to buy that. So you rather believe what others say rather than what the official web page says. So right now we are in this. And I'm sorry, but this is what we are doing right now as communicators. Big plans as a church. Huge series of videos radio station networks, television networks, but it is still the official voice of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm very critic in this moment. I can be fired. <laughs> I don't mind. I'm serious. It's not working. You said that before. You have barely received emails. But if you Google, and you have been speaking about that, about the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you will find a lot of information, misinformation, and probably ugly information that you don't want to read about. Why? Because the unofficial voice of those people that are complaining, they find their own pulpit. But the church members, they are quiet because we professionals of communications are taking care of the job. So we are not allowing them to do the job. And when the people go to the Forums where the people complains or greets or whatever they do, they only find what? Bad things. That's it. And this has to change. Of course, we now have socialized our products, okay? This is the Spanish website, what we, you saw before. And we, of course, all our content from Hub Channel, Spain, Radio, AWR Spain, and all our content, that we publish that on Facebook and Twitter and Different places, Google Plus. Do you have Google Plus? You should. Not because of visits, it's because of uh, position, Google position. That's it. Okay. Darling knows better than I do. <laughs> I'm a fan of you, man. <laughs> okay. But it, it still doesn't work really very good. I am amazed how you guys are doing in Florida and other places because you still interact with uh, the Facebook people that you are getting in touch with. But in, in my case in Spain, it's very difficult to have real contact even through the Facebook page, okay? 
So, of course, you have a lot of content that you can share through your Facebook uh, profile, and you, I encourage every church member to just share whatever video that we publish, the radio show, whether we have done, so that people can share these things. I, I'm sure that some of you have heard about this video series of The Truth in Two Minutes. This is not the, mo the, the point now. But there's a lot of things, the radio that we have over there, as well as the television on demand. There's a lot of things that can be shared. But what is our task as a church? What is our task? Preach the gospel. Where? To the whole world. Is that possible? Is this going to be ever possible? Thank you. It will. But not on the way that we are doing it right now. And I am so sorry. It is a huge task. Evangelism 3.0 actually is, is a hot thing. Is evangelism made, made by all, from all, for all, using any means. Is not a matter of a professional person. Is a matter of every single believer. Do you agree with this? Are you really sure that you agree with this? What are we doing then? That's a word. One of the words. <laughs> Get out. I'm the professional. I'm the pastor. I'm the preacher. I will preach the sermon better than you do. So please invite your neighbor, your coworker, your whatever, to the church, and I will preach them. We are not allowing the church members to preach. In media... We are doing the same with our church members. Evangelism 3.0 is this. Of course, I'm not talking about just removing the whole structure of the church. We need it. We need to have a reference, and not one, even more than one. We need one in North America, South America, TD, EUD, or whatever. We need the church of, uh, here in Newville. We need the website of uh, Newville College. We need the reference websites. We need them. But we need as well all the church members involved in the preaching task. And this is something really very tricky. And you know who's going to finish the preaching of the gospel. You know it. Who? Who are going to be? Say it. The lay people. Not the pastors. Not the media professionals. The lay people. We have said this on preaching, personally, but we never, we, we never thought about communication as well. To the lay people. This applies as well to the lay people. I'm talking about this. Why don't we just take the huge task of preaching the entire gospel to the entire world? I'm not talking about baptizing the whole world. I'm just talking about preaching. Why don't, you just, why don't we just... Split the entire world into small pieces and deliver a few of them to every church member. Would it be affordable on that way? Even faster than you think. Even faster than you may think. This is a coaching, a coaching sentence, you know. If there is a huge tax that you do not feel comfortable or that you feel that you're not able to, uh, to cope, split it in small pieces as small pieces as you can cope. So the, the first one, okay, I can do this, so let's go for the first step. You can go by foot from here to Spain. Well, by foot, you can swim a little bit. <laughs> you need to swim a little bit. But you can go by foot, you know what I'm saying? It's a long way, but you need to give a first step. And after that, a second one, and a third one. It is a huge task to be done just by a bunch of people like we are. Even that we have the best media. It is still a official reference with the credibility that is in really believed or trusted. You know what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm, the point, don't you? So why don't we just split the, the task in small pieces and let the people do it? We have a lot of church members that they are bored. They do not know what to do. I, I, I will talk a little bit more on this. The question is, who controls it? That's the point. 
the Holy Spirit. I don't know, but I think it's worldwide. In every, once in a month, you have the personal ministry responsible of the local church having a sermon, encouraging what? The, I, I need you to talk. <laughs> So, once a month, at least once a month, we have the personal ministry responsible of the local church preaching, encouraging the people to get out of their bench, to get out of their home, and to do whatever they can to preach the gospel. Don't we? Okay. So, now, have you ever thought of who is going to control what that old woman that is sitting on the second row is going to say when she is at the grocery store? Who can control that? Who can control what that young guy who is playing right now, Angry Birds, on the last row, will tell to his... No, there's no one. <laughs> it was, everybody was looking around. No, there's no one. Who can control what is this young person going to tell to his classmates? If he does. Who controls this? Nevertheless, we encourage what? The members to do so, don't we? Why? That's, that's the point. Why don't we just encourage as well our church members to start sharing things in the net, an in internet, whatever, the internet, or even in the hike club that they, want, they go once a month for climbing a mountain, whatever. It's not a matter of media. It's a matter of do we really trust our church members? If we do it so once a month, no matter what they say when they are in the supermarket, why don't we just trust them as well and trust the Holy Spirit, which is the bottom line, to teach them what to do, what to say. Of course, we will have a task to, to we will have a, a word to, 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 to go on, showing them, teaching them things to do, don't we? Okay, so the point is this, brothers and sisters, there is a case of study. Uh, I want to catch up on time, so I would like to have much more time because it's really very deep what I'm thinking about. Estudiar la Biblia, which is a blog published on blogger.com, is a tool of evangelism 3.0. There, there you have the, the website address, the URL. Okay? This is someone that, in his spare time, publishes a Bible study once in a while. A uh, no name person. It could be a Bible study, it could be a grocery list, it could be a, I like sewing, so I like sew, I'm, you know, sewing, is that the word? Sewing, thank you. Well, not, not sewing of seeds of love, no, but, which is an act, in fact, <laughs> but sewing. <laughs> whatever you want, whatever you like, publish something and get your own audience. Start interacting. And I will show you the figures. This is a real case. This is the blog website. This is one of the Bible studies that is published already there. And in the spare time, maybe it's published something once a month, maybe once every three months, maybe whatever. But look at this. It, had, it has had already, it's over 3.7 million of visits. Just the spare time of someone. Do you know what is that? 3.7 million of hits, of Bible studies given away. What do you think? One person on his free time, once, every one, once a month, maybe once every two months, has reached 3.7 million people, probably. And there is a Facebook page linked or related to that blog, and it has, you don't see the figure, but I can tell you, 643,000 followers. That guy, whoever he is, has a <coughs> virtual church of over half a million people in his spare time. One person with two hours a month. That's it. Ah. 
Could you imagine, let's make it round, 600,000 people, one person. If we had 10 people like that person, how many people could we reach? Six million. Six million. Could we find just 10 people here in UK to do this job on the free time? So we could reach 6 million people like that. Could we find how much it would be with 100? 60 million people. Could we find in TED 100 guys, young persons, or it doesn't need to be a young person to do so? Do you want me to keep counting on? It's not necessary, it doesn't. The point is, we need to ask every church member, what do you like to do? And this is the point where I start a workshop, but I'm, I have no time. I'm, I, I have been invited to do this workshop, the second part, in Switzerland in April. So I will start to do this workshop in April in Switzerland. But the first thing is, what do you like to do? Because we think that we know how to preach the gospel properly. So we want the church members to do the work as we think and understand that it should be done. But it doesn't work for them. If you have the formula for that, tell me, please, because I didn't find it yet. But I have found that they can share whatever they like to do. It could be biking, bicycles. It could be riding, motorcycles, as I do. I have done more, much more contacts through motorcycle riding rather than my pastoral work. And I have a bunch of evangelical pastors, and I have a couple of people from the Spanish government, the Ministry of Justice, that they, in their spare time, are motorcycle riders. We are friends. I'm talking about the, the right hand of the Ministry of Justice. He's a motorcycle rider. We are friends. You can do much more things with the things that you really like to do rather than giving regular Bible studies. This is um, mind-blowing, probably. Um, you probably do not agree with me, but I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about because I have experienced this in my life and in my ministry. So I'm not talking about theories. I'm talking about a practical thing. It's not only what, they do, what do they like to do, it's as well what, they do, what do they feel comfortable with because they might not be comfortable with things, but there's always something they do not mind to share with others. If you say, hey, go out and preach the gospel, and they go and knocking door to door, do they still do these, here, these things here in UK? I don't think so, no? Neither in Spain. Door to door, it doesn't work anymore. Maybe to Jehovah's Witnesses, I don't know. <laughs> Neither for them. But in Spain, if you like soccer, I hate soccer. <laughs> I hate football, I, I don't like, I'm sorry, I'm not a regular Spaniard. <laughs> but the people just, Steps out and, oh, have you seen the Real Madrid and Barcelona, whatever? They, have, they, they found something in common. They start talking. And after a few minutes, why do why you do not smoke? Why do you do not drink these things? Why do you not? The, they get something in common and they, they start talking about all the things. So this is the point. Telling stories that they have in common. And the rest will come up. To our task is to help every church member to find ideas, create their own content, their own experiences and stories, which is what we're talking about this weekend, and tell them to share these stories personally using any media, any means. I remember I was in the Ibiza Island, nice place, by the way, <laughs> giving this uh, talk. And I had a 78-year-old uh, man sitting on the sec third row. He said, say, hey, pastor, I'm 78. I don't even have a cell phone, those that you have, that you see whatever television is and that. How can I apply this to my life? What do you like to do? And he was in a good shape. I like to hike a lot. Is there any club for hiking? Yes, there is. Go and get associated of that. Why? When you have a walk, you will probably walk with people for two, three hours. I'm sure there will come up the opportunity somewhere. Do it. It's a social network. It doesn't mean that has to be a social mean. 
You get the point. Of course, it's much better if you apply this to social media because you're reaching out a lot, the whole world, and you will find your audience for sure. So brothers and sisters, that's a part of the <laughs> pastor telling, speaking like, tell your own story. That's what we should ask to the church members. But not what you preach it, what you have preached, their own experience, their, whatever they like to, tell them to do so. Do never tell them what to say. Tell them to say whatever they want, but to say something. Because if we do not allow this, if we do not encourage this, we will still have the main official pages and means, and we will still have those that are against the church, but those that have Something good to say will never say good things about the church because the church is in charge of telling these good things. So when you Google it, you will find a lot of bad things and a few good things, but they are official, so you do not trust those. Do you see now where is the point? Where is the failure? It is a, home, a, a, a whole change of mindset, starting by ourselves as leaders. And I know this is just the beginning. Now we should start with a debate and probably what I call a workshop. Let's play with Google News. So you, it's amazing what you came up with Google News and some questions that I could, I could do, but I need to leave it here. I want to catch up with the time. Thank you, communicators, for encouraging others to share their stories.